So hello and welcome. I wanted to talk a little bit about the draw shoulder today and some key things that you should consider when you're going through your shot and working on you know, the set position, setup position, and how you can effectively protect your shoulder and put it in the best possible position to minimize injury, minimize load on the shoulder, and then also increase how efficient your technique is. So the first thing I wanted to look at is some kind of common mistakes, if you will, and common causes of putting the boat, the draw shoulder in the wrong position. So first of all, a really common thing is allowing the bow to compromise the draw shoulder position. I've talked about this in the past before with the set position set up, that kind of thing, but allowing the bow to kind of drag you forward, pull that shoulder forward, isn't gonna help you. So you have to make sure this is the priority and then move your bow around that. So that's the first thing I wanted to say there. The second thing I wanted to say is, as a general rule with the draw shoulder, if you allow the hand and the arm to move too far forwards, like this, the further you go from its neutral position in terms of the shoulder, the more load there's gonna be on it. And over time, this can maybe cause an injury or increase the chance of an injury. So what I mean by this is, say I'm in this position here, shoulders in neutral, you know, it's fairly straight line between the shoulder and the draw elbow, and I can kind of come from here, come up, and that's fairly neutral, not very much load. If I'm maybe perhaps very far forward and I allow the string to kind of pull me very far forward, pull the arm forward, in this position here, you can see here how the shoulder is effectively being pulled forward a lot more. In this position, there is a lot more load on the shoulder and this could cause an issue. It might not necessarily for everyone, but it could cause an issue in the longevity of you know, your shooting and the shoulder health. The reason for this is if you go too far to an extreme, it can cause extra load on the shoulder. If you go too far this way, if you go too high, so if you have a very high setup position, if you're going too high here, that can cause more load on the shoulder because you're going to higher in your range of motion here. Also, if you go too far back in terms of if you're at this position at your set, and some people might draw and then come up. This position where you're coming back is then putting more load on the shoulder and you're also increasing the tension on the string, obviously. So that's putting more load as well. So as a general rule, ideally you want to keep it quite close to neutral. If you can keep the shoulder in a nice position, come up, down and maintain that position, that's really good. Some archers might prefer to have you know, a shorter setup position. They might prefer to come up here and then draw, and this might work for them, but it's essential if you want to do this to make sure you're being aware of the shoulder position, aware of the impact that this choice can have, and you're able to then draw in a way that doesn't compromise it. For example, if you want to do this, it's very different if you then allow the hand to be really too close to the bow arm, like this. So if you're very far forward and the hand is close to the bow arm, this can put even more pressure and load on the shoulder joint. And then when you draw, because of this closed angle, that you can also see here when you draw, it makes it very inefficient for the shoulder. And when you're drawing, this makes it incredibly likely that there's gonna to be too much load and it's not very efficient even when you get to full draw. So in this example, the remedy for this is rather than being here is to make a little bit more distance between the draw hand and the bow side and straighten this line out so that when you draw, you can come around the body more and keep the shoulder in a more healthy position. So as I said before, coming up and having this shorter setup position will put more load on, but you can manage that in a certain way by effectively when you're shooting, you can feel what's happening in the shoulder joint, you can feel if there's much tension, if there's a feeling of space and the ability to move, that's what we want. We want it to feel free. We don't want it to feel constrained or compressed or like there's a lot of load or tension. That's the kind of bad side of the feeling. What we do want is the feeling that it's free, it's you know easy to move, it's efficient, and you're able to move freely around and draw in an efficient way. So that's what we do want. As I said, 
too far that way, increases the load, too high up, drawing too much like this and then coming up. And another key thing, and this is to do with how you're drawing the bow, is what I mentioned before. If you're too close to the bow shoulder, this will increase the load through the draw shoulder. And this is a really important point because if you're too close here, when you draw, it's very hard for you effectively to come around the corner and for you to draw around and to use a scapula in the right way when you're coming around here and to get this elbow in line. So it's very hard to do that. Now what you can do, like I said, is if you come from here and you just bring the hand slightly out and prioritize this line, elbow, draw hand, bow hand line, then when you draw, keep that and crucially keep the wrist straight too. That means when you then come through, it's much easier for you to come around with the scapula and use the correct muscles of the back rather than being too compressed. As a quick demonstration at home, you can just try that with a band. Even when this, you know, this band is five pounds, whatever, even when I go from here, that feels okay. Shoulders in neutral position. You can see the shoulder position is okay. Then if I bring this in here, see how this shoulder compresses and tenses up and I can feel it immediately. You can do the same at home too but this immediately compromises the shoulder health, compromise how you're gonna draw, and then eventually it compromises your final position at full draw because it's gonna be too tense and you can't expand in the way that you need to. So this is a really key thing. Now talking about this, one of the main reasons why a lot of archers struggle with this is because they try and do their alignment too early and they prioritize their shoulder alignment first. So what I mean by this is it's kind of a bit more of an old school way of thinking in terms of, okay, I'm gonna do my stance, then I'm gonna align my shoulders to the target, and then I'm here, and then I just simply lift up and draw back like that. And what I'm doing there is I'm prioritizing the alignment of the shoulders first, I'm coming up and I'm trying to get bow shoulder alignment, and then trying to get my hand in line with the bow, and then draw to the face, and then now after that, I'm then more concerned about the front side, the draw elbow, the draw hand, the bow hand. So it's about doing this side first and then doing the front as you draw. That's a little bit more of the old school way of doing it. And what that leads to is exactly what I mentioned. Maybe too much of a short pre-draw, too much of the hand coming too close to the bow shoulder, I mean too much compression in the shoulder joint. A better way of thinking about it is for you to prioritize the front alignment first. So I call this kind of the front alignment. What I mean by that is this line between elbow, hand, bow hand. So prioritize that first. So rather than being here, prioritize this alignment first. So that's a nice straight line. And then when you come up and into alignment, you bring this front alignment into the body and then you start focusing on the back alignment. So it's the other way around. And this is a much better way of doing it because it allows you to keep this connection. It allows you to keep the balance between the front and the back. And then it allows you to bring that in and get the back alignment as well in terms of the scapula. So you can see when I'm demonstrating that, if I go, if I get the shoulder alignment, come up and then try and get the other alignment, try and get that round, it's very hard, it's very tense. And this is just, it's not really very nice, even with a band like this, with a bow, it's incredibly hard. Whereas if I, do the front alignment first, then come up, and then bring that into my body and rotate round, and then draw. It's so much more efficient. It's so much easier to get this elbow around the body. It's so much easier to use the scapula in the right way, the draw scapula, and get the alignment between the draw shoulder, bow shoulder. And it's much easier also to keep the head in the correct position, because the head movement, having to move the head around because your hand is too close to the face here, having to move your head around affects the tension in the neck and the upper traps as well. So it's really, really important to prioritize. Like I said, I've said many times, posture first, obviously, head position, but prioritize this front alignment, then come up and bring that into the alignment of the body. So then you focus on the back afterwards. And by focusing on the back, I mean focusing on achieving the alignment of the shoulders and the scapula. So that's what I mean by that. Now, if we talk about finding this position for you, so different archers are different. If we talk about 
coming from here? How do I know whether to do that amount of tension or this amount of tension? How do I know that? What is my metric for finding that? And how do I know if the shoulder's good? So for the shoulder, it's what I talked about. You want a feeling of being free, no clicking, no clunking, space. You want it to feel open and you're able to move. You don't want compression. Those feelings are exactly what I talked about before. That's what you're looking for there. So in this position, you wanna make sure you can maintain the grip and the hook balance and the balance between the two. This is the crucial bit while you're maintaining that connection. If your position isn't good for you, it's gonna be harder for you to come up in a synchronized way, come down in a synchronized way, and maintain the balance through your shot. So if you're feeling like you can't maintain the balance, it could be because the position and the way you're doing it isn't right. So this is a really, really good point here. And by focusing on this balance, it will give you the feedback you need to say, okay, I'm losing my grip here, or I'm losing my hook here. Perhaps it's because I'm, a, I'm allowing the pre-draw to be too short. I'm having the setup here too short and I can't feel enough uh, set in the grip or set in the hook. I can't really feel that because it's too loose. So maybe I need a little bit more, that kind of thing. So this can really help exactly how you find out where you need to be. The second thing you should consider when you're working on this is, can I keep my core? Can I keep my head? If you're having to move your head around because of the way you're drawing, that's number one is probably because you're not drawing in the best way to make sure you can keep your head. So that's the first thing. Second thing is the core, which links into the head, obviously. If you're having to lift up and move back with the core, it's the same thing there. So these two things can really help you find the position. The third thing is when you come to anchor, are you able to come from your setup to your anchor in the best way possible in terms of not moving the head, nice movement, not using the upper traps on the draw side, and then also moving into the expansion phase nicely. So these are some key things you can look at. Okay, if, for example, you're drawing too far here, coming up, it's gonna make your setup position more tense, but then also when you come into anchor and move into expansion, it means that this upper trap is gonna be more tense and it's gonna be more likely that you won't be able to expand freely round. You might have some hanging up under the clicker and maybe the expansion direction isn't around, maybe it's down a bit and the release is a bit outwards. So you can use this to tell yourself exactly how you need to work on the other areas of your shot. So this is why it's really, really good to basically use parts of your shot to tell you what you need to work on and to give you feedback. So the feedback might not always be in the part that you're working on. And this is something that you'll develop over time and you can also start to improve and use more and more the more you practice it. Now finally, one other thing I want to say on this topic is you don't need to exaggerate the movement of the shoulder and keeping it in a neutral position. Too often I might see someone where, you know, they start a little bit high, so maybe you'll ask them to lower the shoulder or keep it in a neutral position and people might end up pulling it down, exaggerating pulling it down. This is not necessary and can actually cause more issues than it, it solves. So you don't ever want to feel like you're really pulling the shoulder down, pulling it out of the socket, really exaggerating that movement. It should just be neutral, very open, very free, like I mentioned, in its neutral position, just like when you're standing. It's just like there, that's neutral. So when you come up, neutral, still in neutral, neutral, good. You don't want to be, if you're here, you don't need to pull it down like that and then shoot like this. That's <laughs> really not very nice there. That's kind of painful. Um, and that just increases the chance of, you know, something changing during the shot and also injury in the long term as well. Again, you just want simple, keep it simple, neutral position. Keep the tension around the neck relaxed. Don't allow yourself to use the upper traps on the neck and make sure you prioritize that feeling of openness ability to move and space. So that's just been a quick video on the draw shoulder and how you can maximize the health of your shoulder and some certain positions that might be compromising it without you realizing. Let me know in the comments below if there was a particular area that you didn't realize was compromising your shoulder. So maybe you didn't realize that having the pre-draw massively too short was compromising. Maybe you didn't realize coming too high was compromising it. Let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear about that. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video 
As always, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll also leave the links to social media down below. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.